when they said it's I was primary CAD, cold agglutinin, my first reaction is, okay, what is it? And second reaction is, well, let's fix it. And unfortunately, the doctors all say exactly the same thing. There's nothing we can do for you. There's no cure for it. And that's why they say don't get cold because your blood will clump, causes these problems. I worked for the Canadian Coast Guard and I was a rescue specialist and went on a search and rescue call and we were pulling in the lines and my hands got so cold it would have been more comfortable if somebody cut my fingers off. And I went and seen my doctor and he did a battery of blood tests at that time and that's when they came back and said I have this protein called agglutinin. He received so much information that he couldn't really retain the name. I hit him with a barrage of questions that he couldn't answer and I quickly realized that now I'm going to be his advocate. In 2013, that's when I was diagnosed with primary cat. I've had two strokes, minor strokes for me, which is very lucky, lots of fatigue. If you were dragged behind a tractor and couldn't get up, that's the fatigue that we feel. Most of the medical community don't understand it. My doctor had told me that he'd seen one other person that had cold agglutinin. I'd been to the emergency room where I had an emergency room doctor tell me, you don't know what you're talking about. I've showed them the medical alert bracelet and they still go, I don't know what it is, I'll have to look it up. It's very cavalier the way they say, don't get cold. But when you have this disease, it's not so easy to deal with because cold can happen at any point in time. Brad loved to do this competition. It's an obstacle course and at the end of 2015 there were so many water challenges and I could see that he was having problems breathing. I could see that his hands were going white and that night was the night I knew cold gluten had changed our lives. When it came to time to retire Emotionally was very hard to admit that I can't do this anymore. I have to leave what I love to do. There were some teary nights and some teary days because <laughs> it was my passion. I was on, on a fish boat that capsized years ago and I was in a life raft for, th for three days. And to me, that was easier than this journey has been because I was in the life raft and I knew somebody's going to find us. This is a journey that is uncertain and is always uncertain. It was pretty lonely in the beginning. We went camping a lot and suddenly we couldn't do that anymore. And we do a lot of things indoors now. We've got shops that allow us to get our creative outlet going. We still go for walks and still go to the beach and stuff. I, I just can't go swimming and that's okay. I do a lot of volunteer stuff now which is good for my heart, you know, and it makes me feel good. I don't feel that I've lost anything. It's just doing it differently and adapting differently. I just refuse to be locked into my, in my house, to let this rule my life 100%. It does change your life, but don't give up. Keep moving forward, because there's always tomorrow and you can always still enjoy your family, enjoy the things that you still do. It's just on a different basis.